What's going on guys, welcome to the video. So last night's Newsnight program featured the Ramonian Scottish National Party MP Ian Blackford, once again showing his unrivalled Brexit and Boris derangement syndrome. Now I actually did not intend to make this video because he said a lot of what he had already gone on about on the politics live show earlier in the day. But of course, Ian Blackford could not help talking complete rubbish, so I have to call him out for it, as did the Brexiteer Tom Harwood in a tweet last night regarding his job loss claims that you'll hear in a minute. So let's check it out. It all sounds okay actually, doesn't it, Ian, when you sort of spell it out like that, we're going to get the deal, it's going to be ratified, it's going to get through Parliament. Sigh of relief. If only thus, and I'm afraid to say I don't see it happening that way at all. The reality is Europe is not going to open up the withdrawal agreement. That's been said consistently. Yes, they're prepared to negotiate around the political declaration, but if that's the case, then the backstop remains in place. And what I worry about, Emily, is that the default position is that we do leave the European Union on a no-deal basis at the end of October. And I would simply say that Boris Johnson doesn't have a mandate for that. I don't believe that Parliament will support that. You know, the situation is that last week, before Boris becoming Prime Minister, we had a vote in Parliament to stop Boris Johnson closing Parliament down. There was a majority of 41. A number of Conservative MPs voted for that and abstained. That is a proxy for Parliament saying it doesn't want no right. deal. Right. So what are you doing then to stop it? Who are you talking to in whatever this coalition is? Well, we've been talking across the House. And what we need to do is recognise that we need to change legislation if we want to stop that. We uh, are when you say to across the House, we know there are some Conservatives. What, what would you, who do you think you've got? 10, 20? No, I think if you look last week, there were 17 Conservatives that voted for the motion. There was a considerable number that also abstained, those in government that are now free. They're, they're leaving office. You've seen that happen so over the course of... you think you've got 40? I don't know. I think the scale of the majority last week was actually bigger than I thought. But the responsibility that we have now got is to find a mechanism that allows us to bring forward a bill that will strike out no deal as a default option. So you've come a long way that. if actually you just want to strike out no deal. Because, you know, a lot of people would look at the Scottish National Party and say, Boris Johnson, th th this is what you dream of, isn't it? I mean... We he could work, be the last... I think there's two things. We will, of course, work across party to stop No Deal because it would be calamitous for all of us. Boris Johnson last week was asked what impact No Deal would have and he couldn't answer the question. We know from the Office of Budget Responsibility that it could tip the UK into recession. We would simply say to the people of Scotland, Boris Johnson doesn't have a mandate in Scotland, but the SNP does have a mandate for a referendum. We won the election in 2016 on that basis. So do you think Boris Johnson will be the last UK Prime Minister? I think many people have said that. I think that's absolutely right because at the end of the day, if Boris Johnson wants to drive us out of the European Union, that is going to threaten jobs in Scotland. And people you in, think in, he's going to be the last UK Prime Minister? I do that, because I think, that, I think what is emerging, that people in Scotland are seeing that the opportunity for Scotland as an independent nation... You know, there's been a lot of talk today about police numbers, but police numbers throughout the UK have fallen by 20,000 over the course of the last few years. In Scotland, they've increased by close to... A thousand. I think that separation of a government in Scotland that's been getting on with the day job, contrasting well, that with what's it, happened it, in Westminster. To be honest, people, people could pick a lot of holes well, in, the in point, what the SNP but, government's doing in Scotland well, the right point, now. But the point is, but we, we won the European election in Scotland, 38%. We've been in power for 12 years. There's a real difference Let of what we see as the Let me ask you about coalition building, here. though, because Joe Swinson made very clear this morning that the Lib Dems would deal with Labour, but would not deal with Jeremy Corbyn. Where are you on this? Will you take... Labour wholesale? Will you take Jeremy Corbyn and work with him if the chance what comes? We, what we will do is we will put ourselves in front of the people of Scotland if there's an election and seek to win as many seats as possible. Of course. I'm confident would increase but that. And we would we would form part of a progressive alliance. But fundamentally... With Labour? With Jeremy well, Corbyn's look, Labour? What, what we said we, we would do is we would look at things on the basis of contents and supply motion. We said that in 2015 and 2017. We haven't written our manifesto for the for the next election. We will publish that as, a, as an election's call. But fundamentally, the choice the people of Scotland will face is whether they wish to become an independent country or not, save ourselves from the chaos of Brexit. Thank you both very much. Thank you. So you see in that clip, he essentially comes out with the exact same shit he had said earlier on the Politics Live show. But of course, Ian Blackford is a complete liar, so I had to at least skim over it with a fine tooth comb. And I noticed something that had changed from what he had said earlier on the Politics Live show. Did you notice it before I point it out? Ian plans to strike no deal out of the withdrawal agreement, as he's already said, because he now realises his party is fucked. His reaction to Brexit shows us that he knows when Brexit happens, the Scottish National Party is finished. We hear Ian Blackford say Boris will be the last UK Prime Minister because he will cost jobs in Scotland and force the Scottish people to vote in an independence referendum, 
which the Brexiteer Tom Harwood actually tweeted in response to, as I said earlier, calling out the bullshit Ian claims about protecting Scottish jobs, when only 13% of Scottish trade comes from the EU, compared to 60% from the UK. It's a shame the BBC host did not get Tom or another Brexiteer on there to call this shit weasel out in real time, as Emily does not seem to know this information, or completely ignores it. Ian then gets to the claim that has drastically changed from his earlier statement on the Politics Live show, where he talks about 20,000 police cuts in the UK, when the SNP have employed 1,000 more police officers. The funny thing is, on the Politics Live show earlier the same day, he claimed something completely different. Let's see what he said on the Politics Live show, and hear again what he just said on the Newsnight programme. And you know, when you talk about police officers, for example, I'm glad that in Scotland, where we've got our own government, that since the SNP came to power, we've got 10,000 more police officers than when we started. That's the difference with a government that's getting on in its day job. You know, there's been a lot of talk today about police numbers. The police numbers throughout the UK have fallen by 20,000 over the course of the last few years. In Scotland, they've increased by close to... A thousand. I think that separation of a government in Scotland that's been getting on with the day job. So Ian, is it 1,000 or 10,000 more police officers then? I'm confused mate. Which one is the correct number? Why did the information change in less than 12 hours? Any answer to that question? Of course not. It's just more Ramona shit from this useless fuck pig. He can't even keep his story straight when he's interviewed twice in the same day. You're an embarrassment to Scotland, like the SNP party you represent. Now I'm going to end the video there guys, like I said I did not even really plan to make this video since it's nearly the same as what he'd said on the politics live show. But of course, this complete tosspot story had changed from earlier in the day and is under the delusion that Boris will be the last UK Prime Minister, so I had to say something about it. The amount of shit this guy spouts is unrivalled, but as I said earlier, they should have got a true Brexiteer on the show to counter this idiot and put him in his place. Remember to leave a like, subscribe and share the video as it helps the channel a lot. And I will see you all in the next one.